punt in football is important to the sport because it signifies a change of possession and allows the team that's now defending a chance to push back their opposition to the other end of the field. Pulling off a proper punt can be a tricky task because you don't want the football to go too far and land in the end zone because then the other team gets to automatically start at the 20 yard line. But you also don't want it to not go far enough because that's a yard gain advantage for the enemy team. So the ideal punt would land somewhere between the end zone and the 20 yard line. There's three steps to performing a proper punt and here we're going to break that down biomechanically and take a look at the hip, knee, and ankle joints involved with this movement. This is the part when the punter brings his leg back in preparation for the kick. Kicking with the right foot, the punter will take a step forward with the left leg, which will put the right leg from an extended position into a state of hyperextension and create elongation of the hip flexors. The punter will concentrically contract his gluteus maximus, semimembranosus, semitendinosus, and biceps femoris to allow the left leg to take a step forward while also isometrically contracting the right hip abductors to keep the hip level while shifting the body's weight. This phase is very important because the punter is now maximizing the elastic potential of the hip flexor muscle group. With the knee joint, as the left leg steps forward, the right knee will go from being fully extended to being slightly flexed by having the quadriceps and rectus femoris muscles, collectively known as the knee extensors, eccentrically contract until that slight flexion is met. The knee extensors will then isometrically hold that position of slight flexion to allow for weight bearing of the upper body as the weight shifts during movement. As the left leg steps forward, the right ankle will go from a neutral position to moving passively into a state of dorsiflexion for just a moment, before pushing off into plantar flexion by way of concentric contraction of the plantar flexors, which include the gastrocnemius, soleus, flexor hallucis longus, flexor digitorum longus, and tibialis posterior. It is when the foot plantar flexes that the knee will then go into slight knee flexion. This is the meat and potatoes of the punt. This is the part that determines how far the ball will go, how much hang time it will have, and where it will land. First taking a look at the hip, we will see it move forcefully from hyperextension into hip flexion by concentric contraction of the hip flexors, which includes the iliopsoas, sartorius, pectineus, and rectus femoris muscles. Now taking a look at the knee, it will go from a state of slight flexion to having the hamstring muscles forcefully concentrically contract to bring the knee posteriorly into a state of active insufficiency which will then trigger a stretch reflex of the knee extensors. From here, the knee extensors will violently concentrically contract to quickly bring the knee from a state of full flexion to a state of full knee extension. Examining the ankle, it'll start in partial plantar flexion and move into full plantar flexion by a concentric contraction of the plantar flexors. The ankle will then isometrically hold this state of full plantar flexion when swinging the leg and making contact with the football.
This face is designed to protect the body after performing a movement at full exertion by decelerating the movement. After making contact with the football, the punter no longer needs to keep swinging his leg forward and thus, his body sends signals to start slowing down the kicking leg to prevent a stretch or tear injury. After making contact, the thigh is still swinging forward at a fast rate. It's the responsibility of the hip extensors to then eccentrically contract to slow this movement until the joint has reached its maximal range of motion. Ideally, the knee will remain in a state of full extension through the end range of motion by isometrically contracting the knee extensor muscle group. Although, some knee flexion may occur toward the end of the follow through from limitation of flexibility of the hamstring muscle group. Even after making contact, the ankle will remain in a state of plantar flexion by way of isometrically contracting the plantar flexors of the foot. In the end, this sports movement pattern is important because these movements can be correlated to activities of daily life. For example, hip flexion is used when getting in and out of your car. Knee extension is used when standing up and ankle plantar flexion is used when simply walking down the street. Even though punting a football may not be practical in everyday life, when you break it down into its respective movements, you realize that those movements are used each and every day.